This episode brought to you by Jamaica Cottage Shop. Vermont Post and Beam supporting local landowners, foresters, loggers, and sawmills for 15 years. Also by TwoCoolTShirtQuilts.com. Too many shirts? Let TwoCoolTShirtQuilts.com help you out. And by HistoricShed.com. Traditional sheds, cottages, and more to complement historic homes. Welcome to Tiny Yellow House. My name is Derek Diedrichsen. Our guest here today, the format's a little bit different. Um, we're not poking in and out of uh, little forts and whatnot. It's kind of just an interview segment. But a man who needs very little introduction. He's been on the Oprah Winfrey Show. You've been in the New York Times, Parade Magazine recently, which I think I saw on your blog has reach, reaches 32 million people. Something like that, Not yeah. too shabby. <laughs> uh, Mr. Jay Schaefer from the Tumbleweed Tiny House Company. Thank you for joining us, I appreciate it. Good to be here, thank you for having me. Uh, it seems, at least to me, more and more as of recent, the whole tiny house movement's just exploding. I don't know if it has to do with the economy and people being broke, because times are getting tough. I think people are becoming more aware of uh, sustainability issues, um, not wanting to spew any extra greenhouse gases or uh, put an extra construction waste in the landfill yeah, yeah, yeah. or consume any more resources than they need to to build a house. And people are getting fed up, it seems, with the entire housing situation in general. A bigger house, you have to furnish it, you gotta heat the house, you have to you know, paint it, maintain it, and whatnot. And again, with these tumbleweed houses, I mean, if yeah. you can get used to living in a, you know, downscaling, living in a small structure, they seem to make a, a good deal of sense. What I'm wondering is, for a lot of people who might be considering getting a tumbleweed house or building a kit house or building a house completely on their own, mm -hmm. what are some of the tricks the trade in terms of downscaling and living in these smaller houses? Because there's a lot of stuff you're gonna have to give up and you're gonna have to cut the fat. The hardest part is deciding what you need to be happy, you know, domestically yeah. what, and what not to have. Once you're, you've gone that far, you've already done the hard part. In the U.S., the average uh, square footage of a home is around 2,000 square feet. I think I've ever actually heard higher than that before, yeah. which is four times the international average. Yeah. So something's going on, it would seem, in, ter in terms of uh, programming or training people to think, I need more, I deserve it, build me the, the four-story house with the helicopter landing pad on the roof and the five jacuzzis. I don't know why you need five jacuzzis. Right. Four, four is all right. Four is better. But uh, in, in terms of your home out in California, living in a, what is it, 89 square feet? If you don't count the loft, 89. If you count the loft twice that, I suppose. Well, I guess a house that's smaller than most people's bedrooms. I mean, how do you get by? What are the tricks of the trade in living in, in terms of small living? Well, once you get beyond figuring out what you need in your house to be happy, um, and what, more, more importantly, what you don't need. And that helps because not everything is worthy of air conditioning and heating and window yeah, space. Yeah. Also, uh, multitasking whatever you can. So yeah. maybe your desk can also be your dining table. Um, that's a little easier if you're living alone than if you're living with two people. Yeah, and even little things like I know at my house, uh, we had a tea kettle at one point in time. My wife's like, oh, it broke. We should go get another one. I'm like, you know what? We have a little pot we put in the stove for water and it's working. So why get an ornate decorative tea kettle when that works just as well? That's not a, that's not a big tip right there. No, that could go on and on though. I, I took if you my, combine, uh, yeah, those kind of things. I uh, took my, uh, then I took my pot and I turned that into my iron because you just heat up the water and then you have an yeah, iron. And I wear it as I had on rainy days. <laughs> but I mean, aside from that, in terms of shelving, you know, some of the pictures I've seen of your tumbleweed house, you know, you can have shelving that has a curtain that pulls across and those, you know, out of sight, out of mind. You know, putting cabinetry underneath the table when you can or shelves yeah. above, using vertical space as much as possible for anything. It's how I came to put my bed up in a little loft. The loft is only three and a half feet tall, just enough to sit up in. As long as you don't have nightmares and sit up suddenly in the middle of the night. Right, or if, if you do, you have a few bumps in, the, in your forehead. Right, well, if you sleep in the middle where the, the peak yeah, is highest, yeah. you're fine. Yeah, some of these kitchens are, what, like six by three or six by four feet? Yeah. Do you eat out a lot, or is it, you know, how do you, how well, do you make use of a kitchen that's uh, literally 18 square feet, let's say? It's all about the layout of the counter, I think, the workspace in a kitchen. You know, if, I think the best layout for a counter I've found is a U shape. If you can manage to just yeah. wrap the counter around your Command waist. Command central, everything. Exactly, yeah. you just like, yeah. you can almost wear your kitchen around <laughs> your waist. 
that's an idea right there. there yeah, wait. the hula kitchen. It's like a hula hoop slash, right. slash kitchen. Yeah. Actually, this carries over into every area of the house. Just minimizing transitional areas. All that space that's used to walk between the usable spaces is wasted space. So no bowling alley esque hallways. Try, no. Try to nix those. Try to get rid of stairways if you can, or at least use the space under the stairs. Fire poles. Fire and, poles uh, are good. That's like ladders, minimal yeah. footprint. I, I suppose one of the benefits of these tumbleweed houses is, uh, you know, if you get sick of the locale you're in, or the the work climate changes, let's say, for your job, you can just pick the thing up and drive it somewhere else. That's true too. I guess that's something we should advertise yeah, more. Yeah, Use as a marketing Thank angle. Thank you so much for joining us here on Tiny Yellow House. And uh, next time you're back in the area, uh, we'd love to have you in again to see what else you've been up to, and we look forward to uh, the brand new book. Yeah, well, it's chop, my chop, bong, bong. Yeah, <laughs> Come on. Uh, once again, the website is uh, tumbleweedhouses.com. And we'll see you next time. Bye.